Okay. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us this week. Um, for those who are wondering where John and Catherine are, they are still in Asia, <clears throat> currently in Philippines. They're going to do two more activities in the country for today, one today and then one more tomorrow. And then they move to Singapore for next week. So for our session today, we're going to have uh, Giovanni and Letty to open our Thursday live session and to be joined by a few more brand ambassadors. We were going to have Rick Anderson. We have George Blytis all the way from Greece. And we have Carrie and Sabine. So without much ado, over to you, Gio and Letty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all. Good evening, good night, and good morning all over the world. And apply today. The, I check the list. Okay. This is the 20 uh, selection call of today. I started to permanent brown, pinagrid on gold, raw amber violet, transparent brown oxide. Transparent red oxide, fire gold ochre, bark sienna light, enviro friendly brown iron oxide, bark sienna, English red ochre, bark amber, enviro friendly yellow iron oxide, raw amber, and the dark color of today, sepia, bandic brown, one of my, my favorite. Lunar Violet, the biggest color in my selection, Nephral Tint, Graphite Gray, Jeans Gray, Pins Blue Gray. Okay, I check in the C Lab, I share in the screen. Okay. Okay. This is the syllab and searching in this. For example, I'm, I'm starting with the brown or red family. I check in this family, red. I'm checking this, for example, for today. Uh, yeah, in the list. Fire Gold Ochre. This is in this case and apply to compare or check in brown family. For example, the Embargo Friendly or selection with single pigment color. For example, bar sienna, bar amber. This is in this position. And add to compare. And check to compare. These three colors today is the the first is fire color is not staining is similar to Barcien and Bartana low staining and um, in this case the Bartana and Barcien have the same pigment pigment, pigment brown seven series one and a fire gold pigment red in uh, one zero two. Or uh, the um, three color is granulating. The first fire gold ore is transparent, and the uh, Bartam and Bart Sienna is semi transparent. All three color is excellent light fastener. And check this luminance starting from the eye value and degree. And for example, I this is my scheme. Thank you for my wife. I close the sharing the screen. Okay. For example, 
uh, for this selection, uh, seven colors is transparent color. Three have three color have a pigment red one zero one. This is transparent brown and red oxide, an English red ochre. Six color have a pigment brown seven, uh, uh, bar sienna, bar amber, and raw amber. And the um, only Vandic brown is a blending for the siennas and bar amber. And sepia and James Gray have a plus from this pigment, plus pigment brown. 29, uh, pink and uh, blue 29, and pink and brown 7, and sepia plus pink and black 9. For this uh, 20 color, only 5 is available in a stick. This is, is Queen Agridon Gold, is Bart Sienna, is Graphite Gray. Bar Amber and Magnificent Neutral Tint. Neutral Tint is composed on this pigment, is in the family cool, it's checking on the syllab. Graphite Gray is pigment black 10, is opaque, opaque and in the family is warmest. All to this is, oh, sorry, all to this is not granulated. The coolest gray is James and pink blue gray. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. Go to the brand ambassador show. All right. Thank you, Gio and Letty. So for for friends who are new here on Zoom and Facebook, thirst for Thursday Lab, we always have, particularly for the past two weeks, we will have the introduction which we talk about our interactive color map, and then we proceed to actual swatching and color insights by brand ambassadors. We now begin with Rick Anderson, who is from the US. Are you ready, Rick? I'm totally ready. Okay. Let me change my camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I like to do first of all is print the colors, and I will be using quinacridone gold, lunar violet, neutral tint, burnt sienna, and sepia. Now, when I print the colors, I always like to go the next step and really put them on paper and play with it a little bit. And in this case, I, I took all the colors and then I, I blended them here so that I can get the feel of, of how they will work together. And the next thing I like to do is, is a piece of artwork, and I will move this aside I decided today to create like a very horizontal piece. This is 22 inches by seven and a half. And on a normal day, it's a challenge to work in this format, but particularly on this day when I'm using five colors uh, and the combination of the colors, it, it's a little bit more challenging. However, this is very important because I get to blend and mix and see how the colors work together. So what I plan to do is if you look at this, the top painting, if you notice these areas here, and then you look down on my paper that I prepared, I've used the green painter's tape, which will act like a, um, like a masking. So I, as I paint, and I'm gonna use this one as a, as a reference painting, this piece won't look like it, but it'll have sort of the similar feel. Now, of course, I only have a few minutes, and so I will begin painting here, and then we'll go to the next brand ambassador, and then we'll come back. But I will continue to paint, but I thought it would be good to, for you to see the process that I've used and in incorporating it here. So I'll, I'll use this brush quite a bit. This is a size 18 mop brush. I've got my paints right beside me here. I'm going to start with the Quinn Gold, and I'm not going to add water first. I will just lay it in. I may add a little water later with a little mister, which will help it to bleed out. Now, the colors that I paint here are just going to be sort of random. And what I like about this brush, too, is although it's a large brush, you can really control it. 
And naturally, if it's going to drive a lot lighter than it is here, I can always go back, add a little bit more pigment, make it a little darker. And as I paint across to the edge here, a little bit more pigment. This is the time I will go back with some other colors. I will use uh, like the, the Lunar Violet, which I love this color because of how it really uh, works in conjunction with the other color I just put in. And of course, I always like to put more dark behind a structure and let this uh, this pigment bleed in where it is wet already. And so again, if I want to use the little sprayer, it really helps. Um, I'm going to add a little uh, sepia. All these colors just work so well together. I'm going to take the, real quick, the Burnt Sienna and lay it in right where I have the tape, right in between there. And that, of course, will separate when I, uh, nicely when I pull the tape up. We'll see that space that's in the middle. I'm going to go back with the Quinn Gold again. Just laying it in really pretty thick here. Um, the lunar violet, if I lay that across here, it's gonna it's gonna really lighten up with with beautiful effects. The neutral tint, I'll just lay it here. Take the mister. And then go back. Now I'm working very spontaneously, but that's how I like to paint. I like for the for the painting to react and let the painting tell me what I need to do. So Ethel, if you would like to go to the next brand ambassador and yeah. I can continue. Thank you. And we'll see what we'll back later. All right. Now we're going to have George Politis all the way from Greece. There we go. Ready, George? Hi, from Greece. It is uh, after midnight here. And uh, I'm so glad to be with you. So what I um, am using today, uh, it's uh, colors that I am normally using uh, when I paint my textures, my rusty things, my all doors and so on. Transparent red oxide, yellow iron oxide, burnt sienna light. I love burnt sienna as well, of course. Queen Acridon gold. I think I never miss this color in any of my paintings. Graphite gray. And um, here you see a couple of combinations where you see uh, that, uh, not sure if it is obvious here, but uh, beautiful granulation and spreading of color happens when I mix some of them, like this is quinacridone gold with transparent red oxide. And I love the way um, transparent red oxide creeps into the ochres, into the yellow area. And this is, um, uh, again, transparent red oxide, but with graphite gray producing a rich dark and yet some beautiful textures, uh, especially when uh, a little bit of wet in wet is involved. Here it is a little bit more opaque, but when we um, help with a little bit of water, uh, some beautiful miracles happen. So I decided to uh, um, paint a simple version of uh, the charioteer, a, a very well-known statue from uh, Delphi, from Greece. And um, my interpretation will be like uh, trying to uh, give a warm um, color 
all over the place. So I'll be, first of all, adding, I'll be adding some um, of the ochres, like I love to start with uh, quinacridone gold. As I have said several times, I love to mix my colors on the paper directly. So here I'm adding now, wet in wet already, some uh, red oxide. Let's add some yellow. This is uh, the eco-friendly iron yellow. And you see this beautiful texture that it creates. For the moment, I am deciding to keep the upper part of the of the hand as uh, pure light. I'm turning my paper in order to have uh, a very good control of the edge and mixing again on the paper. I'm adding some warm yellow, some uh, sorry, some uh, warm color like. Uh, burnt sienna light so that's what i'll be doing working um, in my chessboard effect technique which means i will be trying to create contrasts all over dark light dark light and so on let's go to another painter perhaps and uh, i'll be here whenever you want to come back to me Hey, thank you, George. Thank you. Um, move on to Carrie. Hello, everybody. Carrie, so can, can you hear me? Yes, we do. All right, today I have um, five colors. I have field ochre gold, or field gold ochre, permanent brown, raw umber violet, Van Dyke brown, and Payne's blue gray. I did want to say this is a cautionary tale. I use crappy paper. So that's the one thing I always say, don't, you should never use bad paper or bad paint. So I had this pad that I was teaching a kid's class with and see how it tore when I pulled my paper tape off. So that's a, a testament to good paper. Um, so anyway, those are the colors and I've got continued on my little color chart that Carolyn Diebel told us we could print off from Google, so I printed these off and then continued with all the colors today on there. But these are all really nice colors. The color that I use the most um, is Payne's Blue Gray. So I love this opportunity that we've been going through all these colors to just try them all out and then find out, you know, like this permanent brown, I probably will start using a lot. Um, so you start to find new colors that you may incorporate all the time. So we're, I'm gonna paint today some little um, honey bears. So I've started one here and oh, here's a little swatch I did of the colors that I'm gonna use. Now I did add in Quinn Gold because I think that's probably a favorite of everybody. And I use that in just about every painting. So I have Quinn Gold for my brightness and then the five other colors um, that I showed you on this sheet, which will, uh, will be in my honey bears. So this is just kind of showing you from going from light to dark, how they all blend together. And then we're gonna show you an action on these honey bears. I just, this is really fun because um, last, last time I did it and this time I have completed a painting of honey bears in a completely different color palette. And then now to come introduce the five colors, um, six if, you, if you're counting the Quinn Gold, these colors in and doing it in a different palette, it's a really fun challenge um, and a neat way to, you know, like do a series of paintings. So I have done a base coat. I'm working pretty wet on wet right now. I've done a base coat, uh, a base layer um, with my Quinn Gold kind of going around. I do have masking on here. All this blue is masking. And similar to George, I like to do my color mixing on my paper. So this is the field over gold that I have right now going in on top of this Quinn gold that was already glazed down below. And then we're just gonna start building up um, these shadows 
and reflections are in this honey bear. Now I'm going to move to my permanent brown. And these are my little paint containers. We talked about them before, um, but they're these I found at a hardware store, um, but a, they're very similar to like a pill box container. And so I make my own pans. And so that's what I have in my hand. And they're nice because they have this hole in the middle. So you can have your thumb in the middle. And then I end up stacking them like this as I'm going through colors. I feel like Rajat with my, uh, the paint sticks in his hands. If you've ever seen Rajat demo, he's got a handful of the Daniel Smith paint sticks, watercolor sticks. This is still the permanent brown. This is nice reddish color as you layer on top. I'm trying to leave a few little speckles out. I normally would have waited for that to dry and then masked out on top of the paint. So you can do layers of masking. I like to do that technique. Maybe at the end when we come back, I will show you my other, the one I just finished in the other color palette just to show you it's kind of fun to translate it to a new color palette. I'm coming back in with the field ochre gold. And so really, if you have any color and you pull out light, medium, dark value, and then, you know, I can add on if you, in that, you know, you can make that stage like here, you can make that light to dark with five or six colors. You pick that palette out and then you just kind of use that formula. You can change up any reference photo or any reference that you're using as long as you have a light and then working to dark some various colors in there. And so I always start my process by shopping colors and deciding, assigning those values. So today when we had to choose our five colors, I shopped those colors and swatched them out to decide which ones would work the best with my honey bears. Now I'm in the permanent brown. And I have, these are all pretty warm. And then I have a couple of the Van Dyke brown, the Payne's blue gray and the raw um, violet. Raw umber violet are all a little on the cooler side. So we're gonna pull a little of the raw umber violet and drop it in here. We need a little darkness and a little cooler tone here. His little foot. And then on the lid up here, I did a combination of the raw umber violet, Van Dyke brown, and Payne's blue gray. Um, so that created this really dark up here. So that's my darkest dark. And we can move over and I can show you starting from the first step, which I'm going to get my lightest, which in this case I'm using my twin gold. And we're going to do a base coat. I've got my bright highlights mapped out already. And so now we're on stage two. So our whites are masked. And then we're coming in and really the whole bear can get a nice glaze of this Quinn Gold. If you don't have Quinn Gold, you need it. I'm using a flat brush. I typically don't use a flat, but I've been using it on my other painting that I just finished. So I've gotten used to. Go down his body. And glow gives that nice honey glow. But I'll continue building. If 
we want to go to the next ambassador and then come back mm -hmm. and see my progress. Thank you so much, Carrie. No, I see you. Do you uh, painting on, is that like a button? So we're going to have Geo, and then we go back to Rick's progress. And of course, if there's anyone okay. in, in Zoom who would like to share swatch or artwork, or if you have questions, feel free to unmute the mic, or you could also just type in your questions. I think Ashley is also helping us check um, questions from our friends on Facebook. Okay, so what do we have there, Geo? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, perfect. I will start for the five six color, the my little cookies. I start with Queen Agrid on gold flat layer, and now apply the Bar Siena and Bar Thumber uh, with my teeny flat blush, the point and apply the layer for create the dark zone to the light. And the continuous uh, after this, apply the um, literally or graphite gray with mixing uh, neutral tint for the shadows and the more dark areas. And continuous, I apply the techniques rajat, <laughs> the three sticks in my end. Not a little quantity of water. And continuous dot by dot. Brush, brush strokes, both brush strokes. And continue the building of my little painting. Now I start the, the layer graphite gray and neutral tint. Okay. And the shadow. And continuous layer by layer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Shall we check on Rick now? Okay, we have George. Okay, there you go. Okay, if you have me, I'm <laughs> continuing with this, this, uh, the background now, uh, creating some uh, wet in wet. Uh, it's just a preliminary, actually, uh, stage. And um, I'm trying to bring contrast and interest to this area. Of course, I have to build up several layers and I like to work in several layers, working all around. I'm trying to uh, build up my darks step by step. For the moment, I like the light that is brought to the upper part of the hand. I will not interfere too much with this area for the moment then I will turn to other areas, but you see already how interesting these colors are and the nice granulation taking place all over. Excellent, excellent colors for, uh, uh, for textures. So um, let's bring some light to the cloth and light cannot come forward if you don't add darks. So this is why darks are so important when painting in watercolor. And you cannot go very timidly or wishy-washy. You must 
you must be rather brave with color, but don't go too dark right away. Uh, have patience. Watercolor is not, I mean, at least for me, it is not a race. It is a marathon. So you must uh, plan ahead. You must think, how can I bring more light, let's say here, and how can I build my darks accordingly, and so on. So that's the idea. That's the main idea. Okay. Let's move to another one. I don't want to take your time. Whenever you want me, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, George. Um, just to mention this part again, in case you missed the Thursday live session and you want to have just a recap of what's being shared, we do have the recording available on our Facebook, the page itself, or just simply go to our YouTube channel and watch the recording and also look out for our Thursday live session, which is available via our newsletter. So if you have not subscribed to our newsletter, you can also do so. Okay, so let's now check on Rick's progress. There, Rick. Well, here we are. Uh, I took all the, the tape away and I left those uh, unpainted areas, but then I went back into them with because the other areas were dry and, and that would give a nice linear feel to this piece. Now, at this point, I used the hair dryer to make sure all of this was dry because at this point, I will start putting in like uh, the, the illusion of trees without leaves. And this is a nice brush that I can really get the feel of trees in the background. And if I'm going to put them here, I probably need to put them somewhere else. However, I may want to be a little bit lighter in this area and not make it as dark as here as I am here. And then if, at one point, if I think that's too heavy, I'll just take my, I wash the brush out and just float it across, which breaks that space up somewhat. And I will continue like this until I feel like uh, I, the, the painting is, is, is finished or enough, but if you notice, I put the structure off center, especially with it being a nice horizontal uh, painting. And I always like to put loose, uh, the feeling of just loose paint at the bottom, but it's generally at an angle and splattered a lot because your eye wants to travel uh, throughout the painting. It goes down here and it's horizontal here, and then you see the, the sky and the structure. And, you know, at this point, I have to decide how much more do I need to work. And, and right now, I am I may not have to, to actually do much more to it because there's a point where you, if you do too much, it, it really is too much. And it, the painting may have been successful about 10 minutes earlier. So at this point, I'm just going to leave it this way. And I'm still leaving a lot of the white because of all the contrast. I did not want to leave the, the roof of the structure totally white because it did need to have some broken up area. So this is how it looks at this point. Like I said before, I really like the painting to pretty much dictate what I do step after step and then stop. It is beautiful, Rick. Thank you so much. It, these colors are fabulous. I mean, I... I can't paint without Quinn Gold, I tell you. And, Rick, and, what the, and is that? the what? What size is that, Rick? This is seven and a half by two, by fifteen. I like the unconventional size. Thank you. Thank no, you actually, it's it's twenty two. I'm sorry, seven and a half by twenty two inch. Wow. You know, in, in itself is a challenge. Mm. So, and, you know, of course, feel free to ask questions and uh, we'll all be happy to answer your questions as, as they come. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Anyone else from our guests in Zoom who 
swatched along, explored the colors uh, we shared today, or anyone else wanted to share an artwork that you've... Okay, do I see Ian? Ian, I... okay, okay, let's put this on spot. Go ahead, Ian. Uh, I've been experimenting with uh, doing heavy graphite onto a painting, so it's not... It's not a great painting. It's it's more, it's more like a bit of experimenting. I've still got a lot of it to do, but what I've... Oh. So if you look at the roof, that had a lot of graphite added to it. So when I... Graphite is what's called aquaphobic, uh, as in it, 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 don't, it, it don't like water. So when you paint watercolour on it uh, uh, and then let it dry and then put a rubber on it, it erases the areas that have got most of the graphite on it. So you get textures that you wouldn't normally get. So that's uh, a little experiment that I'm trying to work with. You can see it very well. Uh, it's meant to be a very dark evening kind of thing anyway so not not the greatest of subjects but I just wanted to have a go at it thank you Ian I think I see Anna Anna yes. hi 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 everybody Oh, maybe I should take off. Oh, I don't know how to take the blur. <laughs> but um, I've um, I've been uh, following a little bit uh, this book by Charles Reed. See, it's not working. Uh, where and I forget where I put it. Anyway, let's see like this. Can you see? Oh no. Yeah, we 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 need to take off the. Can you can you take back to me? Sorry, I I, I don't even okay. remember how to take it off. Sorry it's about actually, that. Actually, if you click on the start video, you click on the on the icon and then arrow up. One of the options there is choose virtual background. And then from there, click on choose virtual background, select none. For In which one? The, the camera, the video icon, do you see that? You know, like in the tap door, release the video. Click on your video. Yeah. Okay. There. So I'm, I'm following this book. I, I, I love um, figure drawing and uh, I'm following a, a bunch of these really quick sketches in anticipation of this like challenge that is coming next month about a hundred um, people. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. And so I'm doing everything sepia. So everything's monochrome and it's just like super quick sketches to do um, um, just to get the gesture of the pose. And they're supposed to be just like, um, can you see? Yeah. And so everything is in sepia. So that's one of the colors we're working with today. Hey. And so that is what I'm doing. Thank you, Anna. Sepia is Anna's color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm more of a purple person, if you can see. But uh, but uh, today is uh, sepia. Yes. Hey. Thank you. Um, so now we have Sabine's colors. Uh, there you go. Over to you, Sabine. Ah, okay, hi together. I just start with six colors. And here are the first five. It's the yellow iron oxide, the English red ochre, the transparent brown, raw amber, and the chains gray. And then I get the burned amber too. And I make a little color card. So you see the several colors and the mix. And uh, I, I just want to make these so I have a, a little bit of a feeling from my picture. And I do the tones too. So I make these all colors from dark to bright. So I have some little tones and 
I just work with stones. And I can choose and can look which color and I can look at the at the darkness and what I need. And so I just want to show these are the six colors I show in trees. And the last one is the chains gray. And you must put some water on it. It just worked with water. And you must take much water. So it works very good. And you can play with that. And make some And just take a little bit of water drop on it. You see, much water. And so you can let the water work. And just move the board. And you see the granulation and the texture of the color. This is the yellow ochre and here we have the English red ochre and the transparent brown and this little one is the raw amber and that is the burnt amber and the last one is chains gray and I want to give uh, the trees little characters and so every tree looks a little bit different. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sabine. I think I just saw Besnik's um, camera. Someone's wanting to share her artwork. So let's put up Besnik's camera there. Hello, oh, hi, hi, Ethel. No, I'm just looking here with my daughter, but she just showed uh, her paintings, not something professional, sorry. <laughs> what so beautiful, so beautiful. And that wow. the other side the house. Look, Nina, they all they are the same beautiful paintings. It's Thank you. always Thank you so good much. to use both sides of the paper. So <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> good job. Yeah, the kids. wonderful. <laughs> it's very it's very productive day for her. Oh, oh. She, always, she paints every 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 day, maybe. Very good. You Thank know, you, that, paint, that, that paint is pretty amazing with the water. I think I'm learning from her. Good, good. <laughs> you can use it. I love the palm trees. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> She's beautiful. There's Thank something so there. Thank you so Lovely. much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Love you all. Love, Love you. you. <laughs> She's always here with me. Sorry, maybe I'm not doing anything wrong, but I, I don't want to tell her, go away. I, she enjoys every uh, Thursdays. She always comes here to see all of you guys, what you're doing with colors. That's like her daddy. She's also into <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so we're going to have um, Carrie's work, and then we can do one full scan of the BA's artworks. Over to you, Carrie. All right, so I'm continuing with my little honey bears. And these colors are working out well. I'll try at the very end before we get off to show you the other one I did, which is a complete opposite color. So this is really fun. And I think, you know, if some people get stuck or they say they have like a block, to me, the, these exercises, you know, just like every week when we pull these five colors you, and, you know, and then we come up with something that we can paint for that, you know, subject matter, it's been really, really kind of fun and freeing. Um, so if anybody's suffering from like an artist block or not, not knowing what to paint, 
just do an exercise like that, you know, pull five colors and find something you want to paint from that. This is the permanent brown. So that was the field ochre gold or field gold ochre. I'm going to say that one backwards. And then here's the permanent brown. That's coming in. And then we'll come up and do our lid. I've got my Quinn gold again. Carrie? Yes. Uh, have you ever tried um, a similar thing to this uh, with different colored uh, gummy bears? I, after I paint it, I'll show you my other honey bear because it's much brighter. And so it definitely made me think about painting gummy bears. Um, <clears throat> that would be a fun thing to paint. Yeah, I've seen uh, on a, uh, one of these free painted uh, image sites, uh, an image of a, a, a jar full of gummy bears in this like glass jar. And it, I think, oh, that's a challenge. <laughs> that would be a lot. That, one. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> I like a good challenge. Mm. Yeah, I've been painting a lot of. I did the pickles, and I've done cherries and honey bears, and then I'm going to be doing some olives soon. I'm just going down. Um, I'm calling it my inflation series because the grocery store bills are so expensive. You've got to get your money worth out of these. So I'm painting it like a luxury item now. So um, I'm gonna get my permanent brown and come up here, get the top of this bear. Actually, I'm gonna come up with Quinn Gold. It's got some brightness up here. So I'm gonna get my Quinn Gold and throw it right at the top. Can I guess, tell us uh, what paper they're painting on today, please? Sure, I'll start. I'm doing, mine's arches, 156 pounds. Yeah, oh, very good. 156? Yeah, 156 pounds. So it's not your traditional mm -hmm. uh, weight. It's slightly heavier, isn't it? Yeah, it's in between the 300 and the um, 140. And I really like that. I like the, and it comes, it's a little bit larger sheet um, also. So I like the size of it and the weight. I don't like the 140 because it's too, I, it's, I always say it's like uh, Goldilocks. The um, 140 mm -hmm. is too thin and the 300 is too soft for me. So I like this size. Gold it goes Lux. along with your honey bears. bears. It does go along with my honey bears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. Yes. It is. Queen Equidone gold appropriate, I was going <laughs> to <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can I ask where you get that size, that weight of paper? Um, one of them I'd have to look it up right now. One of the paper company, one of the art companies sells it. Jerry's or Dick Blick, I think. I don't. You can check all three. I I always look at Cheap Joe's, Jerry's, or Dick Blick. And the only bad thing is sometimes you have to buy ten sheets of it. They don't like to sell it. You know, like buy per sheet. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like it enough that I don't mind having 10 sheets, but, or you can go in with a friend if you think it's something that, um, you might want to Sometimes, try. sometimes they will allow you to buy very varied sheets as long as it adds up to be 10 sheets. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that. Thank you, Carrie. Let's invite Rick Thank again. You. Who do we have here? Oh, George. It's, okay, go ahead, George. It has come. Well, uh, yeah. No. It's uh, dust going on, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, building up. As I said, the, the darks. It it needs it needs more work. But for them, I think it is uh, it is okay because the idea was to show how to use just some warm colors in order to create a painting and then um, take advantage of the individual characteristics of those paints um, where you need some more transparency, when you need some more opaque results, when you need some more granulation and so on. Um, and finally, what 
matters is to create a balanced effect between light and dark. If you achieve that, then as Rick said, you don't have to work for ages on a painting. Um, normally I work a lot more in detail and uh, I build up um, my layers step by step very patiently. Uh, so I would say that for a demo it is okay, but normally for a, for an exhibition painting, that would be like, um, you know, uh, like a preliminary value sketch. Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you. Okay, back to Rick. Well, what I decided to do was to go ahead and as this was drying and I already signed it, figured with the time I have, I will use these same colors and just really be very loose and spontaneous. And of course, still doing a landscape, uh, but letting the colors blend together and with the movement and and it's just fun and exciting to do things like this and, and not plan it out into a lot of details. And that way it's, it is more spontaneous. So now the paper here, I use a 300 pound Fabiano Artistico uh, watercolor paper. It really works well with this. And this is Fabiano Artistico uh, hot press, which the surface being a lot more smooth and, and the paint can just lay uh, lay on top of the surface a lot and not go into the valleys and all. So it it's fun to experiment with with different uh, different textures and different uh, types of papers. Rick, what yes. do you find paper wise uh, for the technique that you're using here is is the best paper? Then do, do you feel that it's it's the smoother paper? It, it, yeah, the, this being smoother. Yeah. See how that works? Just It just sits up on top of the paper. So it, it has more ability to move. Yes. And I have to be careful not to do it too much like that or it's going to run everywhere. Mm -hmm. But again, this paper is, you know, the 300 pound uh, cold press. It, it really does hang into the paper and, uh, and the paint definitely just goes into it and absorbs very nicely. Is, is that uh, 600 in, in grams? I don't know, but it's... it's <laughs> yes. that, but yeah. I would say, I would, not knowing grams, but, you know, in, but in pounds, it's 300 pounds. Right. Oh, 640, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. But these are great colors to, to work with. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So thank you, Ethel. Thank you, Rick. I just saw Mark's um, artwork here. Would, would you like to share about your, this is, this looks like trees. Okay, we've added the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't planning on, on doing anything, but I looked at what I had and I picked out some of those colors and this, this is not a typical mix that I would have used, but uh, I'm glad I gave it a try because uh, I just did a small sketch, it's, it's not very big, uh, um, of an abstract landscape using um, the colors that I have. And the ones that I have are uh, graphite gray, uh, and gold, um, environment friendly. <clears throat> Uh, just uh, started playing with some of the colors and uh, I'm so glad I did. I mean, I could easily expand this into a full painting. Um, it, they, they work very well together. Um, and I love the, the way that Quinn Gold works with everything. Well, Quinn Gold is <laughs> gold, basically. Um, and graphite into the sky also just, uh, it's just a lovely effect. So yeah. I'm probably going to expand this into a, 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 a proper painting um, in some time. 
Thanks, Mark. So perhaps you can do, oh, okay. Now I see Gio's frame as oh. well. Before we go back to, okay, Sabine then. We have Sabine's frame. Go ahead, Sabine. Sabine, your mic is off. Yes. There. Yes, I just work here on my little stones. And I can tell you that my first stones in my life. And I just think the colors are like stones. And so I go for that picture to make. And I started here to make it. I started with the little stones in, this, in, the, um, in the colors. And... I started with the yellow iron ochre here. And then I make a stone for stone and color for color. And at the end, I go in with the chains gray in uh, some shades and layer for layer. And you see, um, at the first time, the stone is just one layer, and here's the second layer and a third layer. And so you can form your stone and give him the illusion of the three dimens three dimension. And so there, and now you can make a negative painting and create a new stone and maybe there and the little one and just go around and make a little bit darker. And the trick is you must be in you must end in the same tone where your color is, where you were. And then it's a, it's a little bit of work, this picture. And so you can go on and it's just like, just like a meditation. Hmm. And it's very much fun when you like it. Thank you, Sabine. We're down to Thank our you. two minutes here. And just checking on Facebook, um, I think something's wrong on Facebook. I just discovered that um, our live stream is being stopped because UMG has detected um, a music, which I don't think we've ever heard the music. Nobody played the music when we were on live, right? But anyway, we're going to check on that and see what we can do so that the, the live stream can be, or the live stream stays on our page, on our Facebook page. If not, if you want to rewatch the video, the recording for today's sessions, we're going to have it on our YouTube channel. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to Gio and Letty for leading the session. And special thanks to our brand ambassadors, Sabine, Rick, George, Carrie, and even for Mark. And earlier we had Anna and Ian as well who shared their artworks. Um, John would always want our friends here to, to share your artworks, even if it's just swatch or much more if it's an artwork. Tomorrow, please do join us. Our guest tomorrow is Carlos Avelino from Brazil. So it's a date again at 10.30 in the morning. All right. Enjoy the rest. Thank of you very day. much. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye.